Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the April 20th edition of Carolina Week. A legendary member of the Tar Heel family is retiring his golden voice. We'll tell you how students at a local university are coping with the devastation from this weekend's tornadoes. In sports, a musical look back at a stellar semester in Tar Heel athletics. Weathercaster Katie Costa will tell us if we can expect to pull out our bathing suits for pool weather this weekend. All that and one man on campus whose mission isn't impossible. Carolina Week starts right now. From the James F. Goodman Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, connecting campus and community, this is Carolina Week. Carolina sports fans will be hearing a different voice of the Tar Heels soon. Good evening, I'm Joelle Kaplan. And I'm Jeremy Spearman. Thanks for joining us. Tar Heel legend Woody Durham announced his retirement this morning at a press conference. Sportscaster Justin Page joined us. Justin, this came as a bit of a surprise for Tar Heel Nation. Yeah, you know, a lot of the Tar Heel fans are just really disappointed about this. No, absolutely. After 40 years behind the microphone as the announcer for the Tar Heels, Woody Durham said that today, you know, now is just the right time, uh, partly because his performance just wasn't up to the level that he was used to for these past 40 years. But nonetheless, it's definitely the end of an era. The voice of the Tar Heels has called more than 1,800 Carolina games since 1971 and is without a doubt a Carolina institution. So it's no surprise that his announcement today brought out all the heavy hitters to the Dean Dome. There you see athletics director Dick Bedore, along with some pretty important people in Carolina athletics. Durham's former broadcast partner Mick Mixon also made the trip from Charlotte. He's now the voice of the Panthers. And Durham was also joined by his wife Jean and their two sons Wes, you see him right there, and Taylor who are also in the business. Very emotional day for the legend and he took a moment to thank fans for the past 40 years. So many considered me a part of Carolina and I thank them for that compliment. And I can't begin to explain the feeling I got every time a visually handicapped fan walked up to me, shook my hand, and thanked me for helping them see the game. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's obvious that Woody touched so many people over the past 40 years. I mean, he is definitely as much a part as, of Carolina as Dean Smith, Roy Williams, Michael right. Jordan, anyone you talk about. So an era ends for Carolina sports, and I think it's safe to say that those are some pretty big shoes to fill. Any right. idea who's going to be filling those shoes, Justin? Yeah, Justin, don't you need a job? Here in a few weeks? <laughs> I definitely don't think I'm up to bar right now to, to, to follow the legendary <laughs> Woody Durham. But no, there are a few possibilities right now. Uh, we talked about Mick Mixon in the, um, mm -hmm. you just saw him in the video right there. He has denied that job. I think he wants to stay in Charlotte and remain as voice of the Panthers. But you talk about Jones Angel, who currently works uh, for the Tar Heel Sports Network, and uh, also his son Wes, uh, currently the play-by-play -play guy for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. He could be a contender for the job. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully they will find someone to fill those enormous shoes left by Mr. Durham. All right. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Justin. Now, after months of dealing with the NCAA football investigation, students and the community might be getting some additional information about the probe. The eight media organizations seeking records related to the NCAA football investigation could get their request answered soon. A judge ruled that UNC Chapel Hill must provide football coaches phone records and information about the student-athlete parking tickets. The university had contended that the information was protected by federal statute. UNC student Quinn Matney is facing a misdemeanor charge for falsifying a police report. Matney claimed to be the victim of an anti-gay hate crime. He reported that he was attacked and burned on the wrist during the early morning hours of April 4th. Police charged Matney with falsifying that report. He's scheduled to appear in court on May 16th. With graduation less than three weeks away, Carolina seniors are taking part in Senior Week activities to enjoy their final days on campus. Seniors kicked off the week with a free showing of the movie Carolina Skies at the Moorhead Planetarium. Tuesday, seniors climbed the bell tower for their chance to sign their names on the brick walls. Tonight at 7 o'clock, seniors can attend the senior send-off at Polk Place. Senior week comes to a close on Thursday night with bar golf. So lots to do, but nothing so memorable as the bell tower climb. May is bike month in Chapel Hill, and town officials want you to embrace it. 
Mayor Mark Kleinschmidt was at Franklin, uh, at the Starbucks on Franklin Street this morning for an informal chat with local residents. He discussed bus, pedestrian, and cycling routes with community members. His team, his transportation team stressed the value of alternative transportation. Bike Month is a regional event to inspire people to use transportation options other than cars. With ongoing budget cuts, researchers at UNC might be scrounging to find other ways to get funds next year. The federal budget, approved by U.S. Congress earlier this month, cuts funding for the National Institutes of Health by about $260 million for the 2011 fiscal year. UNC gets lots of grants from the NIH each year. These cuts don't include money UNC will lose because of state budgets. Now, the UNC system could be getting some budget relief thanks to a potential bump in tax revenue for the state. The state is anticipating slightly more tax revenue than originally projected. This could help offset the 17.4% in cuts the UNC system is currently facing. While some legislators have said that they'd like to use the surplus to help higher education, there's been no decision yet as to where that extra money will go. Students and area residents could soon have to pay more for services from Planned Parenthood. Congress will vote on a bill tomorrow to cut federal funding for Planned Parenthood. The general opposition against the organization mainly involves the abortion clinics, which Planned Parenthood says account for only 3% of its services. If that bill passes, organizations in North Carolina wouldn't close, but representatives say they would have to raise their prices. UNC Hospitals is about to expand with a new medical center in Hillsborough. All the dignitaries were on hands for the official groundbreaking earlier today, and here's a look at what the new $230 million hospital will look like when it opens in 2013. The new facility will include more than 50 beds, six operating rooms, and an emergency room to help serve northern Orange County. Despite the destruction and damage that's been done to their campus by the recent string of tornadoes, Shaw University students have hope for the future. Reporter Kirsten Garris traveled to Raleigh to talk with students and hear their stories. Uprooted trees, broken glass, and rooftop shingles still cover the grounds of Shaw University. Days after the storm, workers are still cleaning debris and students are moving out, but there's still room for optimism. Um, right now I'm just thinking positive. Courtney Scott is a junior at Shaw University and she's confident that the school will be back to normal by August. As far as the fall, I feel like we're going to be ready to open our doors back to the students and it's going to be a good year, maybe even better. I think it's like a blessing in disguise. Other students like Ricky Peterson also say the community has been a major factor in Shaw's recovery from the storm. It's just been, um, been great like to know that um, our school is so loved by everybody, that they're willing to help us in a time that we really need them. Right now, the only thing you can see on Shaw University's campus is debris and caution tape. But this Thursday, students from across the state will be coming back to Shaw to help with cleanup. Scott says the campus cleanup will be the start of getting the campus back to normal. But to keep students safe in the future, Josh Creighton, the director of emergency management for Wake County, says preparation will be key. Universities have uh, make preparations and have plans in place to, to deal with things, with, with things like this and uh, make sure that the student population is educated what to do in tornadoes, tornado safety. And we have information available at readywake.com. Peterson says the student body will implement drills and safety lessons. Make it actually try to make it mandatory for the freshmen to go to a, uh, procedures and, and classes so they didn't know what to do when um, the storm hits. The sun has set on this semester at Shaw and there's a lot of work to do, but there's still hope on the horizon. In Raleigh, I'm Kirsten Garris, Carolina Week. Now, as Kirsten told us, students from UNC will be traveling to Shaw University tomorrow to help with campus cleanup. That starts at 3 p.m. and there's still time to join the group if you're interested in helping out. Well, you might not consider it a legitimate medical treatment. But one teenager uses ancient Eastern medicine to cope with a serious heart condition. That story coming up after the break. Everything about buying a bigger place? Just waiting for a visit from the credit fairy. There is no credit fairy. How else will I get a better credit score? Look, you keep your credit card balances low and only open a new card if you really need it. No fairy? There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Much too much. Those boys are much too much. 
We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The smallest them. moments can have the biggest beat impact beat on a child's life. A little bit rowdy, R-O-W, woo, D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. All those boys are much too much. Those boys... ¿Cuáles son los números que importan en tu vida? Tu salario. Tu aniversario de bodas. Los cumpleaños de tus hijos. Si tienes diabetes, el número más importante es tu A1C. 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 El A1C es el número que le dice a tu doctor si tu diabetes estuvo bajo control los últimos tres meses. Porque si tu diabetes no está controlada... Uh... Pregúntale a tu doctor cuál es tu A1C. Pregúntale. 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 Él lo sabe y tú debes saberlo también. Únete a la campaña Ahora Sé Mi A1C. Americans use acupuncture to cope with headaches, allergies, and even anxiety. One student has even used this ancient technique to recover from a cardiac arrest. Health reporter Caroline Smith has more. A year and a half ago, 19-year-old Natalie Huff of Hillsborough collapsed at her high school when her heart stopped. So we weren't aware um, that, that, I, that there was anything wrong with me. Huff found out she has a genetic condition that causes her heart to beat abnormally. That abnormal rhythm led to a cardiac arrest that deprived her brain of oxygen, causing long-term movement and balance problems. The hardest thing that I had to deal with after that was limited use of my legs. Huff began physical therapy to regain control of her legs, but progress was slow. And I wasn't improving as fast as I wanted to be, and it was very frustrating. So Huff turned to alternative techniques, like acupuncture. Acupuncturist Miles Rowe treated her with scalp acupuncture, which involves inserting needles in treatment areas along this line across her scalp. This area of the head corresponds with motor function. Rowe says that treatment is effective for some movement problems like huffs. I actually came in really skeptical when I first you know, received acupuncture treatments, um, but I've seen it work you know, really enough times to to think that it's, you know, really a, a viable solution for a lot of issues. Huff says people should consider alternative techniques when modern medicine falls short. If you're really committed to getting better, then I believe you would want to try everything out there. Today, Huff relies on a combination of Western medicine for her heart condition and another Eastern practice, yoga, to help with her balance problems. In Hillsborough, I'm Caroline Smith, Carolina Week. If you're interested in pursuing alternative techniques like acupuncture, contact UNC's Integrative Medicine Department through the Carolina Week website at carolinaweek.org. The Carolina Inn might be a symbol of the past, but new sustainability efforts are pointing to the future. The historic inn was built in 1924, but workers regularly renovate and refurbish its 185 rooms. The newest additions include soybean mattresses, double flush toilets, recyclable rugs, and only locally made furniture. Carolina Inn officials say the green initiatives, initiatives add to the Inn's appeal. A local body shop is making history with a new technology that will help the environment. Chapel Hill T uh, Tire Car Care Center offers lead-free weights on all tires that they sell. Here you see one, they look small, but their effect is large. The tire weights are traditionally made of lead and help absorb vibrations as the wheels rotate. But even at speeds of more than 50 miles per hour, the lead can rub off the tires onto the road, eventually finding its way into the water supply. The new lead-free tires will eliminate this possibility. You know, Joelle, despite the crazy storms we had this weekend, I still found a way to get out by the pool yesterday and we got a little bit of sun. Yeah, I mean, it's been really pretty out the last couple of days and weathercaster Katie Costa joins us in the studio. Katie, is this bathing suit weather going to continue in the next few days? Well, Joel, as you can see, it was a pretty hot and breezy day out there today, but we could very well be seeing a change over the next few days. Your complete forecast is next. Listen to your uncle Johannes. Raisin bombs make you grow up smart and successful so you can be a doctor, a lawyer, a handsome genius composer. Like me. Feed your kids the arts. Visit americansforthearts.org. Treat your family to Van Gogert, packed with live and active culture to boost kids' math and reading skills. It's sure to satisfy your hunger for inspiration. 
Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. So, April. Yeah? You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? It was not. It was like. <laughs> it's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Carolina Week. I'm weathercaster Katie Costa. Well, over the past few days, we've been pretty hot, temperatures well into the 80s, but we will be seeing cooler temperatures on the way for the next few days. And with that, we will also be seeing rain on the way for Friday and Friday evening. But the good news is, is that the rain will clear out Saturday morning early, just in way for a beautiful holiday weekend. And if we take a look at the visible satellite imagery, we see what's going on cloudwise around, across the state. As you can see, there's a pretty distinct line of cloud cover to our west versus to our east. And this is because of a cold frontal disturbance that is getting ready to make our way into the region. As you can see, the cold front is marked just like this across the western part of the state. And you can see there's a lot of rain associated with the system, but the good news is, is that the rain's not going to move in until Friday and Friday evening. So we don't need to worry about that just yet. Now, if we take a look at our pollen trend for the next four days, well, we see that today we had a pretty high pollen count. Tomorrow, we will also see a high pollen count. We will mediate a little bit on Friday, but look at Saturday, very high pollen count for Saturday. So if you are sensitive to pollen or you have allergy problem, be sure to limit outdoor activity on Saturday. In case you're wondering, most of this pollen is from pine and oak trees this time of year. Now, if you're planning on heading out to the Miami versus Tar Heels game on Friday night, the start of the game will be pretty moderate temperatures at 60 degrees. But note that we do have a 60% chance of rain, so be sure to bring a poncho along with you because you will need it. And by the end of the game, you will cool down a couple of degrees, still pretty moderate temperatures. But once again, we do have those rain chances, so be sure to have that rain gear with you just in case. Now, if you're planning on doing some traveling this weekend, we're going to be warmest at Charlotte, 85 degrees. But note, we do have a slight chance of storms for Saturday morning. But note that overall, it'll be pretty nice over Charlotte. Now, at the triad, we'll see 80 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Overall, nice weather there, too. Now, out west at our mountains at Asheville, 81. At Hatteras, we'll be slightly cooler, low 70s. But overall, pleasant weather across the state, no matter where you're planning heading this holiday weekend. Now tonight will cool down to 68 degrees, so it will be pretty moderate night temperature wise. Winds will be at the southwest at 6 miles per hour. Now we do have a slight chance of showers with this cold front that is going to be moving through, but the good news is it's only going to be a stray, stray shower or two if anything does happen. Overall, mostly cloudy. Now we're going to wake up with a warm start, temperatures at 61 degrees, fairly mild morning, partly cloudy skies, and by afternoon we'll warm up to 74 degrees. But note this is about 10 degrees cooler than where we were today, so it will feel cooler tomorrow, but an overall pleasant day. And if we take a look at our five-day forecast, we see that it's going to be pretty cooler or cooler over the next few days, but we are going to warm back up into the 80s on Sunday and Monday. We do have that rain chance in store for us Friday and Saturday. It looks like the best two days to be outside are going to be Sunday and Monday with that warm, hot weather in the 80s and sunny skies. All right. Well, that sounds great, Katie. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Well, beads aren't just for decorative jewelry anymore. One Carolina student says beading can beating can lead to saving lives. Reporter Caitlin Ferugia has a story. UNC junior Morgan Abbott is the founder of Carolina for Amani, a group that raises funds and provides internships to travel to Kasumu, Kenya, home to the orphanage New Life Home Trust. Carolina for Amani sells beaded necklaces, scarves, bags, and other Kenyan wares to help raise money for New Life Homes. It's money that can help children like eight-year-old Wilson, just one of the kids Abbott met on her first trip to Kasumu. Abbott says Wilson wants to be a doctor, so he can care for kids the way doctors cared for him. 
and for him to have that kind of outlook on life and that understanding of what true joy and compassion was as a five-year-old that surpassed my own understanding and the understanding of those around me in the United States. I knew I wanted to keep going back. And Abbott has now been back to Kenya three times, bringing the beaded necklaces strung by UNC students back with her. In addition to selling beaded jewelry, such as the earrings that I'm wearing, another way that Carolina for Imani fundraises is to enlist the help of student organizations such as Tri Sigma Sorority to sponsor a child at New Life Homes, specifically raising money for infants like Basil. Carolina Ferramani brought the director and administrator of New Life Homes, John Ondeche, to come see the process of making the jewelry. He even tried to make a necklace himself. Ondeche says he now has a new interpretation of what the beads mean. When I look at the beads, I almost look at them as a, a symbol of a miracle because that bead is saving a life. Carolina Ferramani sends 12 interns to Kenya each summer, and Abbott thinks the program will be an important part of her life for a long time to come. And that's good news for kids like Wilson and Basil. In Chapel Hill, I'm Caitlin Ferugia, Carolina Week. This year, the program will use another intern in Kenya. Now, for information about how to apply for that opportunity, go to our website, carolinaweek.org. Sportscaster Justin Page joins us in the studio. Justin, it's been a really great semester for Carolina sports. I know. It's hard to believe another one's coming to a close. No, absolutely. Great success for the basketball team. A lot of other teams, I mean, their seasons aren't even, haven't even wrapped up yet, so still more to come. But nonetheless, you mentioned it, end of the semester right around the corner. So coming up after the break, we take a trip through a fabulous semester in Carolina sports. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. When I was a kid growing up, um, I actually was bullied so bad I had to leave school in eighth grade and go to another school. A safe space is a, a place where nobody judges you, where you're safe from bullying or from anything that, that you think is bad and that you don't want to go through, or your friends or your family. Every student deserves to have a safe space at school. We need to put an end to bullying now. Please visit safespacekit.com. Help us put a safe space kit in every school in America. Hello and welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Justin Page. The Carolina baseball team is back to its winning ways after losing three straight in Raleigh this weekend. But last night against Coastal Carolina, a big fifth inning would give them the 8-3 win. The Tar Heels actually scored seven runs in that inning, and the Heels would extend their home winning streak to 19. They take on Miami on Friday night. Now, I think it's safe to say that the winter and spring sports seasons have been as exciting as any in recent memory. And as the semester comes to a close, we take a look back at the best moments in Carolina sports. Up, I just laugh, put my kicks up on they desk, unaffected by they threats, then get busy on they ass. See, that's how that shot down me, man. That's how my daddy raised me. That glittering may not be gold, don't let nobody play, man. One in the air for the people ain't here, two in the air for the father that's there, three in the air for the kids in the ghetto, four for the kids that don't want to be there, none for the that hold him back, five in the air for the teacher not scared to tell those kids that's living in the ghetto that the holding back that the world is theirs. Yeah, yeah, the world is yours. I was once that little boy, terrified of the world. Now I'm on a world tour. I will give up everything, even start a world war for these ghettos. Those tough times don't last, but tough people do. I'm living in a 
that 21st century Doing something mean to it Do it better than anybody you ever seen Do it, screams from the haters Got a nice ring to it I guess every superhero need his theme music No one man should have all that power The clock's ticking, I just count the hours Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the I have to say, I had, I had a great time. You know, it, this team chemistry made it made it so fun for me. Stop tripping, I'm tripping off the power. Till then, that the world's ours. Fantastic job by sports reporter Sierra Watkins in putting that piece together. I hope that all of our viewers had just as much fun watching the teams as the Carolina sports team had covering the teams this semester. So, great semester overall. Yeah, definitely. Some of those images never get old, no matter how many times we Absolutely see them. Absolutely not. <laughs> really great highlights. Thanks, Justin. All right. Well, if you saw someone peeking into your classroom making sure you were there, would you report him? I might be tempted, but in this case, he's not some weirdo. He's a man on a mission. We'll explain coming up. If you have a story idea, call Carolina Week at 919-843-8292 or email us at carolinaweek at unc.edu. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365 UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27599. Be sure to check out Carolina Week and Carolina Connection online at carolinaweek.org. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. I remember how much you said you liked wine. Oh. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Now, Joel, imagine have one, having someone make sure you were in class every single day. I feel like that might be a little bit creepy, but <laughs> one guy actually gets paid to watch some of our students. But Lindsey Hawkins says, He's not sketchy. <laughs> He's coming, peering through windows, walking from class to class, and he will find you. He's Colonel Steve Haysacker, but he doesn't command troops anymore. Instead, he commands football players by checking to see if they're in class. Most of them know me and wave going in. They say, you know, yeah, you're not getting me today, Colonel. And while few things intimidate offensive lineman Jonathan Cooper, this man does. He'll open up the door and just stand in the doorway, just cast a shadow over the whole room, and then look around and just staring on me. While that's scary, what's even scarier are the consequences of being absent. That was pretty much a physical beat now. You'd have to do a workout that was extremely tough and it make you question whether you want to play football anymore. Athlete class checkers aren't unique to UNC. Universities across the country hire them to protect their scholarship investments. Once they got a lot of time constraints, some of them get up and lift weights as early as 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, we care how they do on the field, the coaches are with them. We care that they go to class. On a typical day, Haysacker walks a route like this one, from Swain to Hamilton, Howell, then Mitchell. And on a typical day, he checks off each athlete on his list. That they attend class on a probably a greater ratio than the regular student body. But be warned, Haysacker's on a mission. He thought he wasn't being checked, and he found he was checked, so, but I, I walked around and caught him. Mission accomplished. In Chapel Hill, I'm Lindsay Hawkins, Carolina Week. 
Well, we're actually joined here in the studio by all of our seniors because this is going to be our last show for the semester. That's right. A bunch of us saying, oh, uh, in our last episode of Carolina Week here, I know we're all going to go on to do great things, right, guys? Woo! Thanks so much and have a great night. Oh.